Okay, so this truck has a really small tank. So I always carry five gallons of diesel with me when I travel. It has a it has a fuel used gauge in the dash and that's within a half a gallon of that's within a half a gallon of being full or empty so what I do is I carry an extra five gallons of diesel with me so just in case I had a Dodge pickup before this one I had a Dodge one ton diesel and it had it had a 35 gallon tank so you know and it got 15 miles a gallon uh, like pulling my boat and uh, So it'd go 450 miles on uh, a tank of gas, but this gets about, oh, averages about 11, 12 miles a gallon pulling my trailer. So 26 gallons, you can go about 260 miles. So you, you, end, you end up pulling over and, you know, fueling up a lot, but uh, anyway, that's why I have diesel here for that. And then... You look right up here where my hand is is that and I'm pumping that and it just got hard to pump so plug the wiring back in and we'll leave the inner fender off until we uh, start it so two things we did over here Replace the glow plug, replace the fuel filter. Uh, I replaced this one. That's the first one I replaced. And uh, so they're not bad to do. Uh, okay, so the next thing is let's do the serpentine belt. So while we were working, Uh, I have my compressor running and I have another video I'm going to show you but this little piece right here <laughs> I had my compressor running and I hear this rush of no air and in the video you'll see what I did I added I added this regulator assembly and it was leaking and so I started working on it and I tightened it too tight and busted this valve and this came shooting off and made a hell of a mess noise anyway so we'll bring you back okay I'm back So, I don't know if you can hear me, but the idler's clear over here. 
Seems like that's in kind of a dumb spot. Let's see if I can. diagram on this truck. All right, I'm going to see if taking out the air cleaner helps to get in there. Well, let's see if I can see what you're seeing. There's a Interesting. Well, let's see if I can get the one down here off. Looks like the same thing. I can't really hold you up there, so let me see if I can get it off. Okay, so I took the intercooler pipe off, and I was able to get my wrench on. And now my only other worry now is, is, is this set up so that I don't have to go around the fan? So, let me set you right here, somehow. Let's see if I can get that out. Get out 
interesting. Wow. Oh, <laughs> things you do because you're cheap. Holy moly. I don't know how I'm ever going to get the new one in there. <laughs> oh, are you seeing this? <sighs> All right, well. Now let's hope I got the right one. All right. All right, looks like it's the right one. So, I think I want to try to shoot this down between this uh, pulley first because it's got to go around the crank oh just craziness Craziness. Wow. Up. All right, gotta start over. Start over. Do over. Got us a do over. Okay, so if we pinch it and use the fan pulley. Okay, let me get that down around the crank. If I can. It does have to go in front of the crank. So, I need to... There's a certain way you want it to, to go. Boy, that is engineered to some tight tolerances. Okay. 
you want some Chinese food for lunch? Yeah. Are you ready for it? No. When do you want it? When I'm done with this. Okay, then it's got to come around. Thing's got arms. Wear glasses. If I wore goggles, I'd still get stuff in my eyes. Okay, are we recording? Alright, so this has to come around here and get underneath the AC pulley like that and then it goes over the top. of that goes around the idler I'm gonna slip underneath the idler come on come on okay there, there. I think we need to feed it. I got a piece of this copper electrical wire that I'm going to feed. Let me see if I can find a different spot. Yeah, I don't know what you're seeing, but it's got to go through there so let me grab this it's going to come up around so I need to grab it there see if that works. Let's see what that'll do. Okay. So that What do we got going on here? Did we twist it? Did we twist it? I think we twisted it. Or am I pulling on the wrong one? This one. Oh, what did we do? Let's do it again. This has got to come around. Oh, it came off of down there. Got to get it back down. <sighs> Under the idler. How that got out from there, I can't get it to go in there and then... Let's 
see if I wish I could get it to straighten out. Okay, so let's get it. Let's get it straight again. That's straight. It's got to go underneath. That pulley right on the idler, on the air conditioner, and on the power steering. And then it's got to go on the alternator, and then it's got to pull through. thing I don't drink. Oh, and I got a better idea. Instead of wrapping that around like that. Okay, let's go down and look underneath real quick and see what it's doing. I think that's just an idler that it's down there on.
fighting with a piece of towel that got down in there. Okay, so I think what I need to do is get it around this pulley, the idler pulley. Well, that ain't right. <laughs> what did I do wrong? Oh, I think I see. It's got to go on the other side of that, doesn't it? So I think how you're supposed to do this is you're supposed to put pressure on like that. Okay, I'm gonna go underneath and check the flywheel. Make sure it's on. Looks like it is. Hey, we just changed the serpentine belt. What a pain that was. Okay. We are going to fix the compressor, hopefully. Am 
Okay. So we got to get this piece out. Okay, so that's the broken part of the valve that I have. Oh, nice. Okay. So, new valve. Drop the new valve. Let me see. Okay. I had it here just a second ago. I swear I saw the Teflon and the pipe dope. Where'd I see it? days. There it is. I knew it was here. Stop there while we're ahead.
Okay, let's see if we can do this right this time. Okay, fired up. build up. Hopefully we don't have any leaks. Cross our fingers. Alright, looks like the compressor's fixed. Let's, uh, That's a lot nicer valve. This uh, this valve was made in China. Totally different design than the one I just put in. So anyway, let's get back on this. Okay. finish up one thing before we start another. Okay, that stopped dripping totally. Which I like. Wipe the plug off. That's better. All right. I think that's the, yeah, it's a 16. By the time I get back, we won't be able to marinate it for very long. That's okay. Okay, so now, I don't know if you can, let me turn, 
tip you up a little. But I'm uh, taking off the uh, oil filter. Here's the oil filter. Let me turn you around. Okay, so I got the oil filter loose. I'm just letting that drain. And we'll slide the tranny bucket over. So you can see that uh, nice color on the transmission fluid. Okay, so this, the tranny fluid, can you see it up there? This has a magnet on it. So you take the magnet out and you clean the magnet off. And then it goes back in. And it wasn't it wasn't bad at all. Hardly any stuff on it at all. Wipe out the housing, get all the goo off of it. Put the magnet back. I'll finish spinning off the oil filter. Oh, making more of a mess. That's what the cardboard's for. Let that drip for a bit while I go get the filter. Oh, nice part about this, I get to lay down. <laughs> no, I really enjoy servicing this truck and I don't know, it's a guy thing I guess. Getting under here and getting your hands dirty. And like I said, it was one of the first things uh, I did with my dad uh, on the old Ford. Uh, I stripped out the oil plug when I was probably 10, 11 years old. It's before I knew righty tidy lefty Lucy. And uh, so yeah, I've been changing the oil in my own vehicles for for years, especially my trucks. Like I say, my cars and my Jeep, you know. $38, $40 to have that changed, you know, and you can stand there and watch them most of the time through the window so you know they're changing your filter and they're greasing the chassis and stuff and so not really worth your time to do those but for something like this you know a transmission service and an oil change and the serpentine belts and a tire rotation oh you know you could be six seven hundred dollars uh, for a service like that so you know doing it yourself has its pros as its cons too can be frustrating but just try to live in the moment relax enjoy it so let me go let this drip out a little bit and I'll go get the other filters we'll get started on putting stuff back together Okay, so I'll just reach up here and get some of this oil and uh, wipe it on the gasket and then you want to 
wipe out the housing. Make sure your mating surface is cleaned off. All right. So I'm told that these uh, Duramaxes have low pressure, high volume oil pumps. And that's what the gauge says. But so you want to make sure you get them good and tight. And then wipe her off. So I talked to a guy, well, I knew a guy, his name was Terry Mackey. He, uh, did auto body and fender he painted the he's the one that painted the old green truck originally and he worked for a company that painted oil filters and he told me that one night they'd be painting Napa color one night they'd be painting white for Kmart one night they'd be painting blue for STP and black for Napa <laughs> says they were all made in the same place you know I don't know if I believe that or not but well, I do believe it because he worked there, and why would he lie to me? But so I like Napa filters. I buy Napa Gold uh, for the for my vehicles. Uh, on my Dodge, there was a service memo that uh, said that if you didn't use a Mopar or I think it was a Wix filter, that you voided the warranty on the Cummins engine and so on that I always ran a Mopar oil filter I don't know if that's true or not that's just something I heard so I always used Mopar filters on my Dodge for the fuel filter and for the uh, oil filter so I don't know if it's true or not, but that's what I heard of the service memo on the Cummins. All right, so now now I'm going to pull the trans pan. So let me see if I can figure out. Looks like it's a 13. So I'm going to go grab my impact and a. Uh, 13 and drop that to trans pan. Okay, so I got the trans pan off. I'm just letting it drip. It started leaking through the filter hole, the external. So I spun the old one back on for a minute. So let me set this right there. And of course, I dropped a couple of the a couple of the uh, bolts into the drain bucket. That gun only has one speed, and it's full out. And then when you the drain plug doesn't drain completely. And another thing is the gasket didn't come out I don't know what you're looking at the gasket doesn't come out with the filter so I've got to pull that so let me get this out of here and we'll get it cleaned up and then we'll put it back together okay so let me see what are you saying okay
So there's the filter. It's held in just by compression. It doesn't have any uh, it doesn't have any uh, fasteners that hold it in the transmission. And that gasket's supposed to be reusable, but I got a new one. So let's let that sit there. I gotta go grab something to hook that gasket and pull it out. Okay, let's go around this other side. Can you see the dipstick? Okay. What are you looking at? I'm trying to keep you out of the oil. Okay. So, right here is the hole for the fuel fil the filter goes in. Boy, it's been stubborn. There we go. So, want to make sure you put some lube around that. So that when it comes out with the filter, because that does kind of help hold it in there. So we'll just push that up a little bit. That looks like that's supposed to be loose. Electronics. Wipe the mating surface. Alright, I didn't want to do this, but... There's one. There's two. I don't know, that oil feels kind of good on my hands. They're so dry. So let's get them all basically together. Oh, sorry. Crash. I gotta fix that. Oh, 
Okay. Are you still recording? All right, so I got all the bolts in one spot. I'm going to shut you guys off for a minute, clean stuff up, and then start putting it back together. Because I still need to rotate the tires and uh, do the tire sensors, and that's a whole nother situation, so I'll be back.